What is up, Zafik Gear Hunter? I'm fired up to release the final review for the Garmin Instinct Crossover. This is a cool looking watch and a cool concept watch. Beyond just the analog uh, watch hands, it's super rugged, has super long battery life, and has all the primary features of the Instinct 2 with a couple of extra features. So if you like this review, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. It will be coming alongside at some point in the 24 hour period the uh, Garmin 4Runner 955 comparison to the Instinct crossover. So stay tuned for that. And if you're a World Cup fan, happy World Cup. I wore this watch in the USA, play England. It's my Ted Lasso shirt, so there's irony all over the place. So in this review, we're going to look at a couple of simple things. I'm going to briefly highlight all of the training and wellness features that you're going to get, and I'll just sort of show it to you off of the app that you would get on the Instinct crossover because it's the same as the Instinct 2 and a, a bunch of other Garmin watches that have the advanced training metrics. And then we're going to look at a hands-on. I don't have an Instinct 2, but we're going to look at a hands-on and we're going to watch these bad boy hands fly over, you know, fly around because the analog hands move to and fro. They have a fancy name, patented name for the technology behind it. And that is what is the backbone of this watch for those of you that would be interested in it. This watch is not cheap. It is $500. And when you compare that to the base model or, you know, more if you get the solar version, if you compare that to the base model of the Instinct 2 standard model, that's $350 and now it's on sale with Black Friday, but $350 versus $500. So there's a $150 difference. You compare this $350 for the $255 without music, $500 for the 955, which has mapping. So what is it about the hands and what would maybe allure you to want to get this watch over some of the others? So with that, let's dive into the features that come available already on this. Now the feature set for the Instinct crossover and even the Instinct 2 that came out is a very significant step above the Instinct 1. So let me be clear about that. The differentiation is large between the Instinct 1 and the Instinct 2. And this has a lot of the same features with two extra features. So the two simple extra features are Garmin Pay. This Instinct crossover has Garmin Pay and it has advanced cycling dynamics, which whatever that is, that's not on the Instinct 2 itself. But all, they both conclude all the main training features. And when you look at training features, the first thing you look at is the evaluation of a workout. Like how does it evaluate the rigor of a workout? So on the Instinct crossover, you're gonna get the full training analytics. If you look at the training effect, both the aerobic and anaerobic impact, it will be a load score and it will calculate recovery time built into the watch. You obviously have the advanced training load features, which now shows you how your load is doing over time, what types of load type you've been focusing on, and what the load score was for each of the individual workouts. Additionally, you have all the wellness benefits. So they have the new feature of the HRV, heart rate variability status overnight, as well as the HRV snapshot, which shows your seven day averages and what your trends look like. You have body battery, and the body battery shows you how HRV, when converted to stress, so it tracks stress, can show the depletion of your internal resources throughout the day or the rejuvenation of them through a night's sleep. And then last, it's got the advanced sleep analytics, which is a combination of just looking at multiple points across a night's sleep to give you a sleep score, as well as looking at the stages of sleep and the respiration, but just the stages of sleep with the you know, with the sleep analytics. So the rest of the features we're gonna see on the watch when we look at the hands on there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna dive into looking at the watch, playing with all the gizmos on it, and we're gonna do more of a deep dive there. So let's dive in. And here it is in all its glory, the Instinct crossover with the analog hands. Let's just make a move for fun. There we go. And all the casing, just to take a look at the brief sort of circle of it. We're gonna look at it in a second in just the specifics, but this is it. I love this sort of blue. It's actually, it's more like a blue gray color of it. I love the accents of the neon yellow. So we're gonna look at the features as much as we can and as detail as we can. So it's, it's actually 47 millimeters across. Now that's pretty 
That's pretty big. It's the size of a Phoenix 7 or Epix. It's 17 millimeters thick. So that is a hardy thickness because they had to have some guts in there to work the hands. Now that is thicker than the Phoenix 7. Phoenix 7 is 15.5. This is 17 millimeters thick. It weighs 65 grams, which is below the weight of the Epix or Phoenix 7 at 71 grams, but it's heavier than the 52 grams that the Instinct 2 weighs. So difference is there. It has got some 22 millimeter pens and this is awesome how the pens work because there's actually a depression point in here where you can pop the bands off put the pens back in and use a quick fit system let's take a quick video of the clips and here is a brief shot of the pens they are actually all black and they fit and fill the complete crevice of the lug right so what you see there is you see this same basic experience but these don't have easily removable pens so and maybe that doesn't matter but that's the same experience you would get on the garmin phoenix 7 or the epics you could have that same experience here on your new instinct crossover hooray um so in the hands you know you obviously have some luminescence on each of the dials you know the hands themselves you know have luminescence on them let's look at that in a dark room here it is if you can see the luminescence um it actually looks dimmer in real life than it does here it is not that bright to the naked eye this is just the power of the All iPhone. Right, so it, it's it's got decent luminescence i mean i have had a lot of analog watches it's not the world's brightest in luminescence it's 10 atm water resistant which is the same as the nc2 but it's five more atm or twice the amount of the phoenix 7 and the 955 and it's got a 28 day standard batter, battery life now you can adjust the brightness of the screen so you you might not be able to see it the brightness appear on there um but you can adjust the brightness of the screen. And one thing I'll say is that if you turn the brightness up from the 20% it comes out of the box, it will have a bigger effect on battery life. So I have turned it up to 60% and I'm getting about 18 days, 18 to 20 days of battery life. And it doesn't include music, obviously. It has the same Elevate 4.0 heart rate sensor as all the devices. It has, you know, and it's got pulse ox, it's got your, you know, basic sensor set so then you have the power cord here the the band itself does feel sort of rigid but not terrible and slightly um flexible so when we look at the watch and we want to get there's a smudge on there um doesn't have a touch screen obviously um so let's do a deep dive on just how the hands work because that is a really cool feature set of it so whenever you go to the side you'll basically get into your widgets and so in the widgets you go down and it's basically the top area when you push the go button is going to be where it gets your information and so you know there's the body battery so we'll see the heart rate status over the last nights and you know, training load status, you can see the weather. So you can see, boom, it changes sometimes to a different direction. So it just rotates around and it is super cool. And there it goes back to the horizontal. Um, so that is how that works. Some screens have different functionality to it. So here's the last sport Let's see if it does anything different there. Nope. Um, heart rate notification. So this is what the notifications would look like um learning a second language so somebody beat me on duolingo so that's how the notifications are going to appear so if you get a notification it's going to move these things say like that um and then you basically would have your notifications in laundry list format it does not have music so this is music control it does this is one of the only watches that has true moon faces and you know, obviously, you know, this is going to be something I think is cool. It shows your VO2 max at like a gauge dial, and we're going to look at how it uses a gauge dial and other aspects. Um, but just, you know, super cool. But this is how the screen looks. I'm spending all this time so that you know kind of the functionality because versus the Instinct 2, which has this little cutout circle here, this is just all screen. And so you have, they have the ability to change, you know, what formats it's going to be in and what the screen usage is going to look like. So sometimes when you go here to the control menu, you hold that down, it's going to push them all out of the way. And so it's just going to be like, you know, just get them off to the side in a different way, sort of bundle them up. And then it gets here. If you get a text message, it'll immediately flatten that out and show you the text message and then it'll disappear over time. But this is how the screen is functionally taken advantage of so if we get into a primary area like training status you can see 
all the basic functions of your training status and how it peels through them using the screen technology. So, you know, that to me is just, it's just cool to see how the screens use, are used. And then when you go into a workout, this is one thing that I think is super cool. This is a CrossFit workout. I'll, I'll put a description link in the description below about how to make your own dedicated CrossFit workout. But once you go into it and, oh gosh, I got to get a heart rate. You can set up a heart rate gauge and this becomes its own little dial. So it'll, it'll show I'm still in the too low of a gauge, but if I was to raise my heart rate, it would slowly incrementally, incrementally go up to the max heart rate over here. So it, it basically, in a single function, you can just peek down and see where you're at on a heart rate gauge because the hands move. That has been super cool to be able to use. Um, when I look at the screen itself, if you just want to know like how I feel in using the screen, I have to disclaim and disclose that I use reading glasses and they're 1.25 intensity, 1.25 readers. And I, you know, I couldn't make, you know, this wouldn't be a watch that I could functionally use very easily in day-to-day -day life for using the data on the screens. Um, because I have a hard time, I have to like stand the watch back, I have to like adjust, I have to get it in a brighter light to be able to see what's on the screen, plus the monochromatic and the larger pixelated display, it's just harder for me to read. So it, it just, not something I can make use of, but that's just something to give you feedback on what these little tiny numbers, these little tiny letters, these little tiny text fonts, it's the same size text fonts as you're gonna get on the Instinct 2, but that is also the reoccurring problem that I had with it even though I really like the cool look of it and the fact that it has all the training details. So this is it. This is the Instinct crossover. So you can just see again and appreciate the hands. Oh, look, look at that. One thing I'll say, sort of a stupid point, but if you hold this down, you go to the watch face options. It just has a select list of watch face options. Um, the thing that I didn't like was this was as black as you could get the watch face. So you have these little dials around here and a date here. Like, why not just give me like nothing? If I just want to just black, like I don't want any watch face. I just want to see the time because that's what I bought this watch for. That's who it's for. So if you get here, you know, you can't make any adjustments to have it just be all black. But that's, that is the Instinct crossover. And let's talk about it in summary. So in summary, what do I think of the Garmin Instinct crossover? Honestly, there is not another watch like it on the market. You know, Garmin has done some watches with, you know, hands, actual analog watch um, face to it, but there's just nothing like this. This has all the advanced training metrics, plus it's got the ultra rugged display or ultra rugged build, as well as a super long battery life. But it's really, really, for those that want the hands and the analog experience. The luminescence isn't the brightest I've ever seen on an analog watch, but it's nice that it's there. But the bottom line with this is that it is for people that want a rugged solid watch with analog hands and then to have all of the backbone behind it for the analytics for wellness and for training and to be able to see weather widgets and get notifications on the watch. So all the features of a full-fledged Garmin watch but with an analog watch face. Because if you think about the gap, the gap between the Instinct 2 at $350 and now on sale and the Instinct crossover, $500. That's a $150 difference. That's a big old jump. And then you think of this compared to the 955, which has mapping and music and dual band and stamina features and running features and you know all sorts of different things. There's, you know, which is $500 as well. This is really just for a certain type of person that really wants an analog. And I actually love it. I'm not gonna continue to use it because I can't really read the data on the screen as easily because my eyes just depend on readers now. And so on the go, it's harder to read the screen. So a monochromatic screen doesn't work for me. A monochromatic, slightly pixelated screen doesn't work for me or a small screen doesn't work for me. So I have to have color, I have to have a bigger screen. But at the same time, I just, I love the hands. I think that's awesome. It's really cool to have all the guts of the health, wellness, and training analysis with the hands themselves. So I'm not gonna compare this in great detail to the 955, the 255, or the Phoenix, or even to the Instinct 2, other than to say it just has those couple of other features. It's definitely, as far as like an all-in-one watch, it's better than, I think, the Coros platform, better than the Polar platform, better than the Suunto platform, you know. 
in some ways could be argued better than the Apple Watch platform for wellness and training. But it's, it stands in its own category. So that is the comparison to other people or other watches or other options is that there just is not a comparison because there's nothing like it. So with that, that is the final review for the Garmin Instinct crossover. It's the Fit Gear Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.